Stand to your feet and let's worship the Lord this morning. Put your hands together. You glad to be in the house of the Lord? You glad we serve a great and mighty God, huh?
you came this morning to worship the Lord, to sing to Him. We've come together this weekend to give Him a praise. And today we say to you, Lord, you are good. Come on, keep your hands going.
Are you happy this morning? All right. Wow. You may be seated if you can. And thank you so much for being in worship today. You know, this is... Hmm. All right. Get a little sound effect there and everything. How about that? Anyway, it's great to see you this morning. And I know that God wants to use this service to be an incredible source of inspiration to all of us. And, you know, we are going through times that seem a little challenging and it's very important for us to get our focus shifted from all the stuff going on around us to focus on who God is and so this weekend we're going to be spending a little more time than we typically would in worshiping our Savior and um, and we're going to be sharing a message in a little while but it's very important that we just say God we want to enter into your presence you know the Bible tells us that one day we're going to be assembled around the great throne in heaven, and we're going to be singing praises to the Lamb that was slain from the foundations of the earth. And uh, we just well get practiced up right now, don't you think? And that's what this is really all about. Now, I'd like to ask you to help us if you would, and you can do that by taking out your program. And on the back section, there is a tear-off section there. I'd like to invite you to tear that off and put that in the offering buckets a little while whenever they're passed. And uh, we'll just say a big thank you for being so cooperative. And then I'd like to um, say a big welcome to those of you who are first-time attenders. If this is your first time at the Grace Place. We're so delighted you're here. And if you'll take that same tear-off section and go to the Welcome Center in the lobby, the big desk in the middle of the lobby, we'd like to give you a gift, and this is the Grace Place Guarantee. You turn that in, and nobody's going to be pestering you this week. So how about that? And we just want to say thank you for being our guest, and um, that's one of the ways we can do that. And then if you've not taken the time to put your name tag on, please do that now, because I'm going to ask you to stand. Let's find about a half a dozen people. Let them know we're so thankful that they're here today, and we're here to celebrate God's incredible goodness. singing so great and to just tell the person beside you I'm so glad I came this morning would you do that I just want to read you a scripture it's out of the book of Psalms chapter 133 it says how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity it's talking about the church now listen what happens down at the bottom of verse 3 it says for where that happens for there the Lord bestows his blessing even life forevermore i don't know about you but that's what i want in my life amen the blessing of god forevermore and the bible says how good and pleasant it is when we come together in unity and praise the lord are you ready to do that together stand up and let's do it Good and play. 
it like you mean it this morning. I just want to pray a prayer, Lord, this morning. We just invite you into our midst. Already, Lord, we sense your presence. And Lord, today, we praise your name. We come together in unity, in one voice, in one accord. And we say you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. There is only one God, only one God, and we worship you today. For the praises of man, we will never stand. We worship you today. Amen. Amen. Let's keep it going.
glad for that this morning? Amen. How many of you glad for the salvation we find in Christ, huh? Oh, you know, He saved us so we can tell the world about the love of Jesus Christ. Ah, I'll tell you what, I'll ask you a question. I want you to answer me this morning. Why did He save you and me, huh? Ah, let's think about it. Oh, why did He save you? I could be a soul set free. Why did He save me? So you could be His child forgiven. Why did He save you? Come on.
or even think about what they're doing. But everyone worships something. Everyone has some ultimate thing that they center their life around. Something or someone that they hope will give their life meaning or purpose. For some, it's religion. For it's money. For some it's fun. For others it's success or power. Or science or knowledge. Or beauty. Or popularity. For some it's love or sex. For some, it's their family. But the Bible says, all things were made by Jesus and for Jesus. This means we were created to worship, but there is only one who is really worthy of our worship. That's why nothing else in this world satisfies. We keep on looking, we keep on striving, we keep on buying, but nothing delivers. Nothing brings us that deep satisfaction that we long for. But when you live your life with Jesus as the center, you're doing exactly what you're created to do. You're right in the place you're supposed to be. So the irony is that when we give our lives over to worship Jesus, that's when we actually find ourselves. Everyone worships, but we were made to worship just one.
And that's my heart's desire. I trust that it is yours as well. That we be where God is. And going back to the song, it says how good and pleasant it is when we dwell together in unity. This morning I believe we've done that. And you know, when it's all said and done and everything is gone, really all we need is God. You know, these days they say, at the end of the day, well, at the end of the day, all we need is God. This is my testimony. I encourage you to make it your testimony because it really says everything to God. Listen to this. When all is said and done and everyone is gone, Lord, you're really all I want. When the best the world has just leaves me feeling numb. Lord, you're really all I want. All that
when all is said and done. All is said and done. Lord, you're all I want. All I want. Amen. Is that your prayer this morning? Oh, just let him hear you. Just let him hear you. Give him the honor he deserves. Just praise him, Lord. You're all we want. You're all we need. Oh, we love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We lift our heart to you, Lord. Oh, for you are worthy of our praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you. So this morning, Lord, we just come to you. We praise your name. We say that you're all we want. You're all we need. Lord, as we've come together in unity and we've lifted our voices, we've done it with one purpose in mind. And that is to let you know that we're going to depend on you. God, I pray that we would just make it our theme as the fall approaches and we go into the new season. To make it our theme that God is going to be number one. For you are worthy of our praise and our honor and our glory. We're going to put you first in every part of our life, Lord. Because you're all that we want. Lord, we claim that verse from Proverbs. It says we trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. We don't lean on our own understanding. But Lord, in all our ways, we're going to praise your name. We're going to lift our voice to you. You promised, Lord, if we would do that, you would make our path straight. So this morning, we just claim that together. In Jesus' name. And all God's people say, amen. Would you just praise him one more time? Come on. Praise him and let him know. Praise God. Amen. All right. You may be seated if you can. And I'll tell you, there is absolutely nothing like spending some time doing what we've been doing. And I would just say that if you think you're going to enjoy heaven, you better get started right here. So, Because the Bible tells us that we're going to be assembled around His great throne, doing exactly what we've been doing. And, um, and that's going to go on for a long, long time. Well, today I want to share a few thoughts with you that I think are very, very important. Um, I don't need to point out to you the obvious, but this has been a pretty significant few weeks um, stark market's been doing this little roller coaster number and you know that may be affecting your lives in some pretty profound ways and um, then you know we had this earthquake that went up the east coast right through washington dc i hope that wakes somebody up up there and uh you know and so and then um then we you know we now have this hurricane that is kind of hurling up the East Coast, and uh, probably right now is in New York City, headed towards Philadelphia, and uh, in parts unknown. And so, obviously, we are in a time where it seems to me there's lots of uncertainty and lots of things that just cause us to be sometimes just full of anxiety and fear. And it's important to understand that we live in a stressful world. That's just the reality. And the stress of this world has a tremendous amount of effect on our lives. And we express that in different kinds of ways. So let me just start a few sentences and you finish them. How about that? I'm ready to throw in the... Some of you have been there. I'm at the end of my... I'm just a bundle of... Some of you are a bundle of two different things it sounds like. All right. My life is falling. I'm at wits... I'm about to come. I feel like resigning from the human. Okay. So it sounds like some of us have been there a time or two because we've got those phrases very well memorized. And um, I would just say that means that probably most of us are pros at this thing called stress. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to deal with it. Um, You may try a little therapy. You may try some fads. You may try a diet. Some people try cults, you know. But Bible tells us that God has a very different way for us to deal with this issue in our life. In fact, Jesus says in John 14 and 27, he says, I leave my peace with you. Peace, I give you my own peace, and my gift is nothing like the peace of this world. So do not be distressed. And if you look at the word distressed, if you take the first two letters off of it, what is it? 
stressed. All right. So I think he's saying don't be stressed or daunted is what he's communicating to us. And I think it's important to understand that God tells us that his gift to us is this gift of peace. You know, peace of mind is not something you can work for. It is not something that you can earn. It is not something that you can buy. It is not something you can learn. It is a gift that God gives to us. And you know, God's peace of mind is very different than the peace that our world looks for. In fact, there's people who've researched it, and I might take their research for granted. They say in the last 3,500 years, the world has experienced 286 years of peace. So that appears to me that there's been a tremendous amount of conflict going on in our world for a long, long time. And I would just say that human peace is always based upon a right set of circumstances. And the peace that God gives us is a peace that is not connected to circumstances. That's why Jesus says, I leave my peace with you. I give you my peace and my gift is nothing like the peace of this world. So don't be stressed or don't be daunted, he is communicating to us. And so I want to take a few minutes today and just give you five keys to finding peace of mind. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care what the circumstances are. If you apply these principles to your life, you'll discover you can experience God's peace. The very first key to experiencing God's peace is this, that you have to accept God's pardon in your life. Romans 5, 1 says, Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible makes it very clear that you and I were created to live in harmony with God. And when we're out of harmony with God, it causes incredible stress in our life. And you remember when God created Adam and Eve, he would come at the, in the cool of the day. And whenever he would come, he would have these incredible conversations with them. And they had this amazing harmony. But when Adam and Eve sinned and goofed up in the garden, then all of a sudden that harmony with God was disrupted. And the Bible makes it really clear that Jesus Christ came to restore harmony with our Heavenly Father. As I've told you before, when He stretched His arms out on that cross... What he was doing was not only stretching his arms out as a sacrifice, he was demonstrating that he is the bridge between where I'm at and where my Heavenly Father is. And that we can have a restored harmony with our Heavenly Father when we place our faith in Jesus Christ and experience his incredible harmony. The number one source of stress, psychologists tell us, is guilt. You know, and all of us deal with this guilt problem because we all make mistakes and we all do dumb things. And that guilt causes incredible stress in our lives. And that's why we need to accept God's gift of an incredible pardon. And the Bible tells us that we are justified through faith, which simply means it's just as if we had never sinned. And that communicates that God is eager to wipe the slate of your life clean. That's exactly what He wants to do. In fact, the Bible communicates that our sins may be as scarlet, but He'll wash them as white as snow. Our heart may be as black as pitch, but he will make it as white as the incredible snows that fall. It's important to understand that that says that God says, I want to wipe the slate clean. Well, Micah, the prophet Micah understood in Micah seven eighteen something about this. Who is a God like you who pardons sin and forgives? You delight to show mercy is what he communicates. So he is saying something that all of us need to understand, that God delights in showing mercy to us. So today, you may have come to this service bogged down by regret, by guilt, by all the things that's associated with the failures in our lives. And God says, you know, you can experience my incredible peace in your life if you will receive this incredible gift that I give you, which is a pardon for your sins. So today, I encourage you to look at your life and evaluate whether you have ever made that personal commitment to Jesus Christ that transforms and changes your attitudes, transforms and changes your life, and changes your incredible perspective on the circumstances that you're dealing with because you understand that God has made everything right in your life. And then we also need to not only accept God's pardon if we want to experience peace of mind, we must recognize God's presence in our lives. In Isaiah 26 and verse 3, this is what the prophet says, You, God, will keep those in perfect peace whose minds are steadfast on you. The thing God wants us to understand is that we must realize that He is with us at all times. And that means that I have to focus on the fact 
that He is with us. See, stress comes when we feel like we're facing the circumstances of our lives by ourselves. Roman 8, Romans 8, 6 says, To be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so that means that what I focus on will determine whether I experience God's peace in my life. And so I need to focus on God. He, Jesus wants us to realize that when we focus our attention on the fact that He is with us, then it changes our whole perspective on things. So that means we never need to remember we're never facing anything alone. God is with us. In fact, in Psalm 46, verses 1 and 10, the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. Be still and know that I am God. Let me give you a little background on what the psalmist was talking about when he says God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He says, be still and know that I am God. Israel was surrounded by 180,000 enemy troops. And those troops were prepared to invade the city and obviously to kill and to take captive the inhabitants of that city. And they were scared to death. In fact, the Israelites were totally uptight. And God said, and now this is Rick Addison's translation, chill out, relax. You know, I'm in control. Five minutes before they were going to attack Jerusalem and destroy the inhabitants, God did an amazing thing. He caused a plague to come on that 180,000 man army. And many of them were destroyed. And God had said, listen, understand that I am your refuge, I am your strength, I am your ever-present help in trouble. Be still and know that I am God. What is God communicating to us when we understand that? He is saying when it feels like that you are surrounded by problems, when it feels like you're surrounded by negative circumstances, when it feels like that everywhere you turn there is something ready to pounce on you, God says, what? I am your refuge and I am your strength. Be still and know that I am God. Now, I would tell you that being still is not something that most of us practice very regularly in our lives because we have constant noise. I mean, I see people that have those earplugs, it looks like permanently glued to their ears. You know what I'm talking about? You know, I see people doing all kinds of things and they've got those things in their ears. There's nothing wrong with that. The reality is there's just very little stillness in our lives. And God says, if you want to know that I am there. Be still. I have people say, Rick, God never seems to speak to me. Well, God doesn't speak to you in a hurry. He doesn't speak to you in a rush. He doesn't speak to you in a lot of noise. You know how God speaks to you? He speaks to you in quietness and stillness. And I don't know how much quietness and stillness you have in your life, but we need to cultivate that. I got up a couple days at 4 o'clock or 4.15 in the morning, had something I was praying about, and I prayed about it for a period of time. And then I just sat down in my chair and I said, God, I'm just going to sit here till I hear something from you. And you know what God told me? Very, very profound. I'm here, Rick. And that's all I needed to face the challenge that I was praying about. Do you understand what I'm saying? And there's times that God does communicate other things to me in stillness than that. But there are times that that's what I need to know more than anything else. Just an awareness that He is there. So I challenge you this week to practice some stillness in your life. And then the psalmist says, and know that I am God. Now what he is communicating is, when you know who I am, you know what I will do. When you know that you know the true and the living God, you understand that He is the God who defends us when we're surrounded by those kinds of problems. He is the God who does the supernatural whenever we're at the end of our resources. He is the God who is able to do things that cause everyone around us to stop and recognize. Only God does that. So I want to challenge you today to realize how important it is that you accept His pardon, and that you would focus on the fact that God promises to be with you. Jesus says that he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Now, I have three brothers, and we don't always see eye to eye on everything. And we may have our debates with each other that even once in a while have probably deteriorated into an argument or two. But I will tell you something about being one of the Addison brothers. If you pick on one of us, you've picked on all of us. You see what I'm saying? And Jesus says, you know what? I'm a friend that will stick by you closer than a brother does. 
I'll come to your defense faster than anybody that's the closest person to you will. I want to encourage you today to stop and understand that we need to recognize that God is with us. Focus on His presence in our lives. And then we need to obey God's principles. In Psalm 119, verses 165 and 166, the psalmist says, Those who love your laws have great peace of heart and mind and do not stumble. So I obeyed your laws. That's what he says. And see, the thing that we need to understand is the Bible is God's owner's manual for life. Now, if you go buy a vehicle, one of the things you're probably going to look for is does it have the owner's manual in it if it's a used vehicle? Why do you want it that owner's manual? Well, I'll tell you why you want it. Because if you see one of those little lights pop up on the dashboard that symbols, and you look at it and say, well, what in the world does that mean? What do you do? You get your owner's manual out, and you look and see what that warning light is communicating to you. Let me just say this today, and that is this, that there's a lot of warning lights that pop up on the dashboards of our lives. And God says, get your owner's manual out. When you get the owner's manual out and you look at what I had to say about that principle or precept that's involved there, you will discover how I want you to respond to that. And I believe that far too many of us simply leave the owner's manual in a drawer somewhere. We leave it stuck away somewhere. We're not utilizing it like God wants us to. And I challenge you this week. If you want to experience peace of mind, if you want to experience peace in your heart, if you want to experience that, then understand the psalmist says, those who love great peace in their heart and mind do not stumble. They have obeyed his laws. See, every commandment in the Bible is for your own good. And God doesn't arbitrarily say, do this or don't do that, because he's a God who's some cosmic killjoy. You know, I think we have to look at what God has to say. It's kind of like we would look at a railroad track. You know, I don't know how wide rails on a road track are set, somewhere between probably four and five feet. And, you know, they are designed in such a way that when a train is on that track, it can go very long distances and carry immense amounts of weight. But if, say, the train decides that it wants to get off of the tracks and go another direction, what happens when that occurs? What do we call that? A train wreck, all right? You know, a train wreck. I would say that I see a lot of people who simply think they can get off of God's track in their life and they can have happiness and success and a wonderful future. And I will tell you what it looks like and what it really is. It's nothing but a train wreck. God says, understand, obey my principles and you'll experience great peace in your mind, great peace in your heart. You'll experience great joy in your life. And so if you ignore God's principles, you'll discover that it causes incredible stress in your life. But if you obey God's principles, you'll discover you won't stumble and make a bunch of dumb mistakes. They're not there to restrict you. They're there for your own good, you know? It's important to then understand, if you want peace of mind, that you have to accept God's pardon, you have to recognize God's presence, you have to obey His principles, and you have to trust in God's plan. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, Solomon says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In your, all your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your paths. What does it mean to trust in the Lord with all your heart? It means to depend on Him. Even when life doesn't make a lot of sense. Trust in the Lord when it seems like everything is out of control because it's not out of his control. Then Solomon says, don't lean on your own understanding. He says, there are things you will never figure out. Now, many of us have things happen in our lives that we cannot make head nor tail out of. We look at it and it doesn't make any sense. When that happens, what is the first question that comes to our mind that we ask God? Anyone want to tell me what it is? Why? Why? Why is this happening? Why is this going on? I first asked that question when I was 14 years old, and my dad was killed by a drunk driver. You know, dad was not intoxicated. Dad was a pastor, father of five kids, man who loved his family. He's killed, the alcoholic is uninjured. Now, for a 14-year-old to process that, it's a little tough, I'll have to tell you. You ask yourself questions like why till you're blue in the face. And I will tell you there are no answers to that. I can also tell you that if I ask that same question today, 42 years later, I still don't have answers to the why question. 
The Bible tells us there are things that happen in our lives that we see just dimly through a darkened glass to the other side. But there will come a time when we will see and understand face to face. Clearly, God will explain it to us. God doesn't have to explain anything to us, and that's important to understand. The right question when those kinds of things happen is this, how? How can I respond to this in a way that demonstrates faith and confidence in you? I can tell you that I am a Christ follower today because my mom asked the how question when she was left with five kids to raise with virtually no resources. She asked the how question, and day by day God showed her how to deal with this. She didn't let herself become embittered. She did not let herself become reactive. She simply accepted things that did not make sense and understood that God was in complete control. Let me encourage you today. There are things that will be happening in your life. If they haven't already happened, they will be happening where you're tempted to ask the why question. The reality is that God says, don't lean on your own understanding. Trust me in the areas that you can't make sense out of and understand that I am able to do things through those circumstances that you would never have thought possible. And then acknowledge Him. That means we admit some basic facts about God. You acknowledge that God is a good God. We sang about that a few moments. That God is a loving God. That God knows all about my problems. That God is in control. That God has the power to change them. That God knows what He's doing. God has a plan. He has a purpose. God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't make flops. He doesn't make flubs. He doesn't make fiascos. God never says oops. And that's a very important thing to understand. And so we just have to recognize that God is communicating some very important things about himself. We have to acknowledge those very important facts. And then the Bible tells us that we need to let him direct our paths. And that will bring great peace in our lives. When I just simply look at God and say, hey, God, I don't know which direction to go. I don't know what to do, but I do know that I can trust you. And when we can't see our way through, we can still experience God's incredible peace. And that's what the psalmist, or, or the Solomon is communicating to us. So today, if you want to experience peace of mind, accept God's pardon, understand how important it is that you understand that, focus on God's presence in your life, obey His principles, trust His plan, and then ask for God's provisions. Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. You know, the great destroyer of peace of mind is worry. And I think it's important to remember that, you know, that worry is the polar opposite of peace of mind. They're in conflict with each other. When worry comes in the front door of your life, peace of mind and peace of heart walks out the back door. But when you focus on who God is and experience His peace, then worry walks out the back door of your life. Ask for God's provisions. And that just leads me to a very important point to remember, and that is that we have two options in life. We can either panic or we can pray. When you're facing a crisis, you can either worry or you can pray. You can panic or you can pray. And if you're not praying, you're worrying. If you'd pray more than we worry, we'd probably worry a whole lot less. And I just say we need to turn our cares into prayers. That's God's antidote. And that means there's nothing to worry about. See, worry never solves anything. But I will tell you that prayer and trust in God is the great stress reliever. You know, in Philippians 4, 6, Paul tells us, don't be anxious or worry about anything, but with prayers and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then in verse 7, he says, and then the peace of God that's not connected to your circumstances will flood your heart and your mind and your soul. And that's exactly what God wants you to experience today is His incredible peace in your life. And so, whether you need to experience His pardon this morning or whether you need to experience His presence in your life or whether you need to experience just this incredible awareness that God has a solution to your problems, I want to invite you to experience God's very best because He wants to give you peace of mind. Stand with me, please. If you'd like for me to pray with you, and you say, I want to experience God's part in my life. I want to experience his peace in my life. I want to experience his special blessings in my life. Come and join me and I'll be happy to pray with you. Won't you come now? <clears throat> Just 
form a circle, you guys. Just go ahead and form a circle. God, we come to you very aware that your presence has been very real in this entire service and that you have something powerful and special that you are doing in all of our lives today. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would work in an unusual way in each of our lives, not only those of us who are part of this circle, but all of us in this room right now. And Lord, I know that you have some wonderful things you want to do in our lives. And for some of us, we just need to experience the peace that comes from knowing that our sins have been forgiven and forgotten and the slate of our life has been wiped clean. And I pray for those who do not know that you are their personal Savior, that they would say, Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for offering me what I cannot earn, and that is the gift of forgiveness and spiritual transformation. (coughs) I ask you to come into my life and into my heart and to make me a brand new person. And I accept you as my Savior. I put my hope of eternal life in the fact that you rose triumphant and victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And we thank you, God, for what you're doing in the lives of those of us who are experiencing your pardon right now. We know you want to give us great peace. And then, Father, for those of us who are carrying around a tremendous amount of anxiety over things that we cannot change and things we do not understand, I pray at this very moment that we would turn our cares over to a God who does care about us in ways we would have never imagined possible. So we surrender our lives to you today. We pray that your Holy Spirit would do something awesome and powerful in each of those circumstances. God, whether we're dealing with problems in our marriage or problems in our relationships with other people or whether it's a financial or a physical or just a decision problem that we have to make, I just ask that your Holy Spirit would do an amazing thing in each of our lives. We thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for incredible blessings upon all of us. And I pray today that your Holy Spirit would work in an unusual way in our lives now. And we ask all this in the strong name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Give somebody a hug and tell them you know Jesus answers prayer. All right. God bless you. Sure enough. All right. You may be seated. I want to ask you to direct your attention to the screens. I wanted to take a few minutes today and introduce you to a new friend of mine. His name is Jack Hetherington. And um, Jack and I met a little less than two months ago, shortly after he began attending the Grace Place. And I thought it was important for us to not only introduce you to Jack, but let Jack help you understand some of the decisions that he's made that I know God is going to use in a powerful way in his life. You know, Jack, I know that God has been doing some very special things in your life over the past couple of months. And um, you and I met probably six or eight weeks ago. And could you just give us some idea of some of the things God had been using in your life to bring you to a place of actually coming to the Grace Place for the first time? Well, I felt in my life that there were some challenges in it, like running down some rapids that um, were good and bad and things that I just felt it was time to step through that door and find God and uh, find a better place in my life. And since coming to the Grace Place, I have been able to find that place. I've been uh, saved and accepted Jesus and God as my Savior. And um, it's been a wonderful thing and a great part of my life. Well, you know, Jack, I know you told me that whenever the first time you came to the church, you walked into one of the tunnels. And when you did, you had some sort of a almost a some sort of an experience of some sort. Could you just share with us what happened? Um, it's probably one of the most powerful feelings in my life when I first stepped uh, through the tunnel into the church um, for the first time. I got about approximately halfway through, and I felt as if I was hit by a tidal wave. And in essence, uh, probably the most powerful feeling I've ever felt in my life. And uh, at that time, I knew there was something special in my life and a better, better meaning and something I needed to do at that point forward in my life. Well, you know, after, not too long after that, I think you and I must have met in the lobby and had a, a probably a pretty brief conversation, I'm assuming. But I recognized that, that somewhere God was at work in your life. And we arranged to meet several weeks ago at Starbucks um, just to get acquainted. And could you just give me some idea of, you know, how that meeting went? Well, it went great. I have, you brought a better understanding of God and Jesus Christ to me that um, it's never been brought to my forefront before. Um, at that time, I did accept Jesus Christ and God into my life in your hunting truck, <laughs> which I'm proud to say 
it wasn't Starbucks because uh, someday when you're t done with that old tired hunting truck, maybe I can buy that from you, but I'd never be able to afford Starbucks. <laughs> Very good, Jack. <laughs> well, you know, I know that that was really quite an experience because I remember asking you, you know, after I'd explained to you what it meant to be a Christian, if you wanted to make that commitment to Christ, and you said you were ready, and I said, well, you want to do it here, or you go out to my old hunting truck, and you decide you want to go to the old hunting truck. And, you know, I think it, you know, it's always intriguing to me that God can, when he's ready to, you know, to do his work in our life, he can do it anywhere and in any set of circumstances. I also know that last week you went through class 101 and 201, and um, so that means you are in the process of becoming a member of the Grace Place. And I know God's got some great things in store for your life and some incredible things he's going to do in the days to come. And, um, you know, I just thank you so much for sharing what Jesus has done and bringing spiritual transformation in your life. And I, I'm anticipating what he's going to continue to do as you grow in your walk with him. Well, thank you. And I appreciate the Grace Place for bringing me closer to God and Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm going to be a better person to come for this. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Well, we're going to have the opportunity to baptize Jack in just a little while, along with some other people. So I want to encourage you to hang around and join us at the baptismal pool because we're going to be um, celebrating what God's doing in the lives of so many people um, through the ministries of our church. And um, we're going to worship the Lord now with our tithes and our offerings. I'll remind you the tithe is a debt we owe to God, and the offerings are seeds of faith that we sow. Your program's an envelope if you choose to participate in the offering that you may want to use. If you would like to participate but not come prepared to do that, take it home and you can put your donation in it, and we'll be glad to pay the postage. And then remember, you can make donations at our Secure Give Giving kiosk, or you can go to the well, uh, or you can go online and make a donation at our website. I'm going to ask the ushers to come, and we'll worship the Lord now with our offering. While they're receiving the offering, remember you can get CDs of today's service at the Welcome Center before you leave. So stop by and pick up a copy and share it with a friend or a family member, or enjoy the service again. I know that'll be a source of great encouragement to you. And um, then also remember that um, if you are interested in joining Karen and I on our trip to Israel in November. You need to be signing up for that ASAP, and so contact us after the service. We'll be glad to talk to you. And then, men, we're starting a special um, class for you called Measure the Man class on Thursday, September the 8th. That's about two and a half weeks away. You can register to the Welcome Center, and you can pick up your books at the bookstore. And then um, remember also, men, that on Friday morning at 6.30 a.m. at Cracker Barrel, we're having our monthly fellowship breakfast. I encourage you to join us there. And then two weeks from today will be Grandparents Weekend. So I would encourage you um, to bring your grandparents with you or bring your grandkids with you. And on that particular weekend, we're going to have some incredible things happening with our kids' ministry, um, sharing some music things with us. And uh, our student ministry is going to be doing some very special things as well. And it's just going to be a great weekend um, celebrating family. And so I want to encourage you to be here for that weekend two weeks from today. And, um, and then... I want to also mention that if you would like to get involved in something that will change your life, we're starting a brand new series of step studies um, in September. And I encourage you to go to the desk or the table in the lobby and get signed up for that because it's something God will use to help you overcome your hurts, habits, or hang-ups. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Phil and Crystal and the entire team for just an incredible service. About two and a half years ago, I really um, felt like that um, God impressed me um, very, very specifically that, that Phil ought to come and he and Crystal ought to come and lead our worship ministries. And they had just gone to a church within a year or so um, in Alabama, and um, he didn't feel like he could leave. And, um, but I'm thankful he finally did. And I know that God's got some great things he's not only doing, but going to continue to do through their leadership and our worship ministries. And we just saw a little foretaste of that right today. And so I want to invite you to stand with us now because we're not quite through celebrating God's incredible goodness, okay? All right. We serve a mighty God. Do you believe it? I can't hear you. Come on. We serve a mighty God. Do you believe it? Ah, let's just keep singing. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation. People from every nation and from, from generation to generation. We worship. 
How about all the singers? Come on, the choir and the praise team. Did you enjoy that? How about our dancer, Liz? Wasn't that wonderful? Let her know. And all the tech team up there in the background making us look good. Would you just turn around and let them know we love them? Yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Ah, just sing it to the Lord. Come on. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Ah, yes, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy Thank you very much for being here today. We hope you've enjoyed this weekend of worship. Before you go, if you'd like someone to pray with you, we have prayer partners along the front of the stage. And if you'd like to receive communion, join us here at the right side of the stage. We'll share together in the Lord's Supper. Also, last weekend, we finished up the summer series uh, titled, You Can't Fix Stupid, But God Can. And if you'd like a copy of that, you can go to the bookstore. They have it in DVD and CD form in a case like this. And then you take that home with you. Otherwise, God bless. We'll look forward to seeing you again next weekend. Thank you.